Season 4 sees Berlin's Tempelhof circuit be used for the third time. Here we are in the pit lane. I'm going to give you an exclusive behind the scenes look. So first up we have Renault Edams. They're currently running 6th in the Constructors' Championship rankings. The team have had a remarkable spell at Formula E. They're arguably probably the most successful team here, winning three team titles and season, two ti season two's title, uh, driver's title with Sebastian Buemi. Nico Prost is a, a relation of four-time uh, F1 champion Alan Prost uh, and is actually their second driver, as you can see uh, on the left here. The team have had a relatively successful uh, and stable performance over the last two races, uh, also last few races. They came fifth and 16th uh, in Paris. So let's see how they do today, hopefully for a strong performance. So next up we have Audi Sport ABT Schaeffler. They are a regular front runner in this championship. They won the inaugural race in 2014 in Beijing. The team won the season three title as well as a matter of fact, and they've really increasingly focused on Formula E since they abandoned the World Endurance Championship in 2016. Uh, both drivers, uh, Daniel Apt and Lucas de Grassi, have been on board since the beginning, since their inaugural race, with podiums aplenty. Uh, they finished second and seventh in Paris, so let's see how they do uh, today in Berlin. So as you can see here, they're currently working on the car between free practice one and free practice two. And in fact, you can see one of the drivers here uh, as well. I believe that's Daniel Apt. <laughs> Geeing up the crowd. So just down the pit lane from Audi, we have Mahindra. They've been with Formula E since the beginning uh, and had a maiden win back in season three, so it did take them a while. You see with these championships that you're not an instant success. It really does take time to, uh, to get to those high level results. Two drivers here, Nick Heifelt, Vix Rosenquist, uh, uh, are here as well and fa famously Rosenquist back in Rome when we were at the Formula E Prix had quite a severe suspension failure on his rear uh, rear right I believe it was uh, and he didn't finish but actually when you look at Paris they finished 8th and 11th so hope for better things in the future for sure uh, and uh, in this race as well with the mechanics working very hard again on the cars just between the free practice sessions free practice 2 coming up in about an hour's time so once again, walking down the pit lane, we have Virgin. They became DS Virgin uh, just a couple of seasons ago. Sam Bird, you see here, uh, two British drivers, and Sam Bird being one of them. Uh, he has been with them since the beginning, since season one, with Alex Lynn joining at, Lynn joining at the end of season three. Uh, both drivers have done pretty well. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can actually see Alex Lynn in the distance, uh, getting a team talk from team boss and business development directors. Uh, Sam Bird won the Romy Prix when we were there and had an interesting incident in Paris as well with his uh, front tyre being lifted off. So hopefully another strong performance from the team today. Uh, Sam was being interviewed earlier by uh, the Formula E press and certainly he feels that they can do very well this race. They've got a good car and a good strategy. So uh, we'll see how they get so, on. So let's have a look at Tachita now. Uh, Tachita has been doing incredibly well recently and it's only two seasons old this team. It's actually a customer team, so they use the powertrains from defending champions Renault, Edams, who we just saw at the beginning of this pit walk. Jean-Éric Verne, uh, you can see one of his cars is currently out for scrutineering tests, uh, but he's uh, doing incredibly well. He's actually championship leader at present, uh, and he actually won his uh, home race back in uh, Paris the other week. So his teammate Andre Lotterer, a uh, local boy, German, Let's hope that actually happens for him this time. You've had, they've had one in Paris uh, with Jean-Éric. Let's see if Andre, Andre Lotterer can do equally as well for Tachita. Very excited to see how they get on. An interesting thing, if you come a bit further around, one of the things you can hear and in fact see is a cooling fan. Now the cooling fans used to cool down the battery pack. It was only 22 or so degrees out here at the moment today, so warm enough, but they want to keep the batteries at the optimum temperature for energy storage and power management. So you can see a fan uh, in place at the moment in one of the air ducts. And when you'll see later on, and you may see them uh, at one of the other pit garages, is they'll have an ice box to keep it cool, to funnel and channel cool air in. It's a very, very uh, simple but effective way of maintaining the batteries at their temperature. So here, actually, you can see Jean Eric's car coming back from scrutineering. Uh, not sure what he's been changed or what needs to be checked on the car, but uh, on its way back now to the pit garage, we were just at a moment ago. So now let's look at NEO. This team is an evolution of Team China Racing, uh, who competed back and actually won uh, season one, so the inaugural Formula E Championship. 
They also launched their EP9 all-electric uh, supercar back in 2016 and they set a new lap record at the Nürburgring when they did so. Their drivers, as you can see, Oliver Turvey from Britain, Luca Filippi as well. They've been having mixed results so far. Uh, both drivers finished uh, 7th and 17th back in Paris. So let's see how they got on today. But again, very interesting to see uh, their pit lane operations and uh, how they're preparing for free practice to qualifying and indeed the race later on this afternoon. It's a very intense day at Formula E. It's all compacted into one day. Uh, so it's not just intense for the drivers, but also for all the mechanics and engineers, but great for the spectators. You get to pack everything into one day. So Andretti. Andretti have a number of motorsport projects and Formula E is probably their latest, if not one of them. They've had a number of different drivers over the years and you've got uh, Stefan Sarazan and Da Costa here at the moment. As a matter of fact, Sarazan, I believe it was, had quite a severe off uh, just there now in free practice one. Because of the street circuits, they're incredibly narrow and the likelihood of uh, accidents and contact with the walls is very, very high. Uh, both drivers did in fact retire last race, so uh, hopefully a better performance this, for this time around. Uh, and particularly, looking ahead, they've got a, f a very interesting partnership coming up in Season 5 with BMW. So that should be very exciting to see how that goes on. So Dragon now. Dragon instantly recognisable thanks to their various colour schemes, red and white. Um, they're a California-based team and entered in Season 4 for the first time with D'Ambrosio and Lopez. No podium so far this year, sadly, for the team, but They've had middle-order performances so far, definitely room for improvement. As a matter of fact, one of the things you can see, which I mentioned earlier in the pit walk, is if you look at uh, D'Ambrosio's car uh, on the far right, uh, you can see the cooling system at work now. So they're currently cooling down the batteries. You can actually see the cooling coming off uh, even further on the right, actually. Uh, if you just pan over to the right-hand side a bit more, onto the other car, you can see the smoke, uh, the uh, ice, coming off there. So pretty cool and innovative method of keeping the batteries at their temperature. Now Venturi, you may recognize the name and indeed the brand and associate it with electric car racing and indeed electric land speed record breaking cars. Just as we're doing this interview, it just so happens that uh, I believe Mario Engel is uh, coming up and doing some autographs. He's one of their drivers. One of the things they're also doing, as you can see, is blowing what looks like a, a very quick stream of air to clean off all the dust and dirt, maximize aerodynamic performance. Now, back to looking at Venturi's wider ambitions and wider goals. In 2016, their bullet car, uh, BBB3, uh, set a new land speed record for electric cars at 341 miles an hour. So, yes, much faster than our solar car, but you know, a different ball game altogether, certainly. They're based in Monaco, the team, and they finished fourth and 13th in Paris, so pretty strong performance from them. They've only had one podium so far this season, so let's hope that changes for them and uh, see how they got on today. Now, finally, we have Panasonic Jaguar Racing. Quite a new entrant to the team. They only entered in season four, uh, so quite a new uh, team into this uh, motorsport that we have, Formula E, but have an incredibly rich motorsport pedigree and indeed history. They've got technical assistance from William working on their motor and drivetrain design and that, that's been powering the team and they continue to improve. Season 3 was much more of a learning game than it is than Season 4. The technology developed in Formula E, I should point out, has real world applications. If you look at Jaguar, they've launched their iPace and they've adapted the technology from Formula E to influence the design in terms of various elements like the aerodynamics and particularly the drivetrain motor and battery systems. Uh, from that. In fact, there's also going to be an iPACE championship in due course, so do stay tuned on that. We can see the scrutineering and technical area for the FIA. Now, a big part of the World Solar Challenge, and indeed any uh, motorsport competition that you enter, has to be conforming to the rules and regulations. Now, this is an area, we saw Jean-Eric Verne just earlier going down there, uh, but this is an area where teams come in order to make sure weight and changes to tyres, pressures, everything is checked by the FIA and scrutineered. So, very much a number of differences of course in the performance and race type but a number of similarities and conforming to the rules is key. So that completes our pit lane walk. A wealth of talent and new teams and existing teams and a number of exciting opportunities await. Not just now but with season 5 and their Gen 2 car which we'll of course show you later on. So please stay tuned across Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, all of our social media channels and of course our Drive Tribe. We own the Solar Car Tribe on Drive Tribe. Do check that out. 
If you're viewing this on YouTube, be sure to like and hit our subscribe button for all the latest updates on Duem and our solar car.